So here's where I want your cameras on. So we'll look through the stories. You got your glass of water, got a little water? So this is what I, just, just watch for a moment. I want you to notice what thoughts and emotions you feel, because I just want you to just, you know, and show you what I'm doing. I'm just gonna take some water and just rinse my mouth out, spit that back in the cup. Write down what you're thinking what you feel. You can put, put it in the chat if you want, but write it down for yourself too. I wouldn't drink that glass again. That's gross. Reaction from the belief system. That's gross. Not about a gum commercial. Refreshing, cleansing. Somebody realized they rinsed out their mouth. They look at it as refreshing, cleansing. Yuck, disgust. Yes, I hope he doesn't drink that. You're already like anticipating future that I'm going to drink it. Somebody's not feeling anything. I don't want to do that. <clears throat> okay, general disgust. Man. Don't want to do it. Somebody's is anybody anybody afraid that I'm gonna ask you to do that? See, nothing's happened, but your mind is anticipating some fear. So go ahead and do that. Rinse out your mouth really well. It's just saliva. Your saliva is in there. If you if you don't want to put that much saliva in, just take that saliva. It's perfectly good. And, and swallow it before you rinse your mouth. And then not as much is going to go in the glass. Does that help? I think I'll drink water and thinking that I can't because I have Ramadan. Okay. <laughs> Your choice of what you do with this is completely on you. You're not required to do this. Uh, you know, this is just a, a way to explore what our mind does with things, right? Yeah. Because let me ask you the saliva in your mouth. First of all, write, write down how that felt to do that and how it felt and what the thoughts were because this is the beginning of the inventory. This is the top layer. It was disgust. Score, I did it. Somebody's celebrating it's a success. But do you feel like it was a challenge, Sydney? You know, was it like some obstacle, like a tightness in your body that you're like, okay, I'm going to try and do it because he yes, and now success because I did it. So what was the preceding thing? Or was it like, no big deal? Because you're celebrating, which means I think there was some challenge or obstacle to get there. So include that. <clears throat> I stepped up and I did something I was sure I didn't want to do. Okay, good. Those little elements are an important part of the inventory. Not just score or success, which is the outcome, but it's like, well, what? What did I have to overcome? What obstacle was there? Okay. Is it important those little details matter as you're doing an inventory? Because you're like, they, they, there wasn't just a success. There was like, and the mind jumps to that because that feels good. Like, let's look back. What was the obstacle? So now take a moment and go, what was I overcoming? What was it I didn't want to do? 
And what was it about doing it? Why didn't I want to do it? And somebody, somebody's looking at the glass thinking, I really should go rinse that out. Right? Beautiful. Somebody's noticing their mind has already built in an automatic program. There's a dirty glass. <laughs> that needs to be clean. Boom. Automatic. This is your mind revealing its belief system. Okay. Ah, okay, so now you, somebody's noticing a lot of childhood beliefs about not spitting in a glass. Okay, Cindy Lee did a little bit. I didn't want to do it because it looked ew when I watched you do it. I didn't want to do something that was ew. Tell you you want to do something ew. Okay, so good. There's a. This is important. Success when you did it. But it's because when you slowed it down, you look back, it's like, wow, I had this whole thing of ew, and ew probably is like your mouth is scrunching, your body's tightening, and you got a feeling in your body like there's a real emotional sensation about spitting in the glass. Yeah. So now I can talk, everybody probably still has saliva in your mouth. Is it, are you okay with it there, the saliva that's in your mouth? That saliva has been there all day, maybe, right? Go ahead and swallow that saliva. Any problems with that? Everybody okay? I mean, we swallow our saliva all the time, all day, right? I mean, it's wonderful. Lubricates the mouth so we can talk. I mean, if we have dry mouth, that's uncomfortable. So it helps with that. Digest food. It's wonderful stuff. Okay? So go ahead and drink that. And notice any emotions and thoughts your brain has. Hey, watching me or considering doing it yourself. You're not required to do it. Just explore what it's like. So just maybe just hold it right here and just see if your body cringes. How do you feel? I'm going for a second swig. How's that feel? Oh, my God. He's going to drink the rest of it. Write down what the thoughts are and every sensation in your body that you notice. Gag, can't do it. Repulsion. Good, you're noticing. Whatever the feeling is and whether you do it or don't do it is fine. I just want you to notice the program we're activating. The, 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 the things that are activating over swallowing the saliva that was already in your mouth anyways and got cleansed with clean water to go back in. It was... I wasn't watching, but you heard me swallow and that was repulsive. Just the, the idea you could hear me swallowing. But if I drank this other water, not repulsive. <clears throat> Makes me that guy you thinking of doing it. Okay, good. Write all this down. Every little thing. Your body's having a gag response. To me, drinking perfectly good water and perfectly good saliva. So here we get to see how our mind is reacting. Automatic programs. You're not choosing to feel disgusted. You're not choosing a feeling of repulsion. You're not feeling, you're not choosing you. This, what we're seeing happen is an automated, conditioned response with narrative stories, emotions, body sensations. And then all the justifying thoughts, oh, it's disgusting and gross. <clears throat> so 
something that went towards vomit, but the water was completely fine. I don't know what went towards vomit, but, but you just felt like you're going to vomit. Okay. Now, second layer of reactions. Now, what are responses? Feeling anxious, thinking everyone is progressing through the experience of me. Good. Now, I want you to write down second layer of belief system. That was the belief system about drinking stiletto or spit. We don't know which one it is, right? Are there thoughts about yourself doing this in front of other people? That you did do it, success, I did it. Or, oh no, they're progressing past because they're doing it and I'm not. What are the thoughts about yourself? Okay. I'm a success because I did it. I'm a failure because I didn't do it. Or I'm a failure. I'm a success because I didn't do it. And they are all gross. <laughs> they are failing at life because they're doing this. And I'm the only one that's intelligent because I am not drinking that stuff. Okay. What are your thoughts coming up about yourself, whether you did it or didn't do it? And what are the thoughts about me for having done it or other people because they did it or didn't do it. Okay. Why I find this exciting while it's repulsive to others. Exciting that you're drinking it? You feel exciting that you're doing something other people won't do? What's exciting about it? Because now we're kind of like, look at the emotion. Selena's so writing, I find this exciting while well, it's repulsive to others. Like, what's the, what makes it exciting? Why is it exciting? Okay, Ian's no real thought about it either way. That's totally fine. Everybody's belief system is different. Everybody's going to have a different kind of response. Okay. To me, it's not a big deal. I don't have a, any emotions about it either way. I've done this a few times. First time doing it online. Feeling different about it, the fact that I was repulsed finding it amusing. Okay, you can be amused about the fact that you find it repulsed. This is my normal bottle of water. So I can keep you off from cringing. This is my normal glass. This is the dirty glass. I probably won't be using that anymore. Let's make a point, but this is my normal glass. Okay, hey, Sydney's noticing that I'm willing to do this for approval of being one of the group. And that's probably related to success. I did it, success, and the feeling like, oh, I did what I'm supposed to do. I get approval. Beautiful. You're noticing like that this is an important element of your belief system. Ah, uh, willing to do this for approval of the group. Okay. Jeff it Sims, it seems like a silly response to even care, but it was there. Jeff, what was the response that you you cared? Cared about what? Maybe I missed it from earlier. You cared about doing, cared in what way? Sanders saying, I'm willing to do it, keep trying just to overcome the belief system programmed within it. That it mattered to me. Observing it made it seem like, what's the big deal? It mattered that you were able to, you wanted the success, you wanted the win, I wanted to be able to do the thing that Gary was asking us to do. Yeah. Why? You wanted it because what would happen? At the time, it was a deal. Okay. So at this point, my intention here was to activate your programs. Programs, beliefs. You have programs about me drinking, and I use the word saliva, because saliva is okay, right? 
Saliva is fine. You will swallow saliva all day. But spit, that's gross and disgusting. Saliva, fine. Spit, gross and disgusting. Although it's the same thing, isn't it? We have emotional associations to words. We have a belief system about what spit is, and it's gross and disgusting, and our body goes, mm, that's our belief system responding. Saliva? Oh, God, thank God I have some in my mouth. I hate dry mouth. We have a belief system about saliva. You have a belief system about saliva. You're totally comfortable with it. You have a very different belief system about spit. It's gross and disgusting. Even though those are the same substances, right? Right? Did anything change when I put it in the glass? No, it's the same stuff. But our emotional associations, the language we put on it, and the feeling of the body changed. That's the program. And it's been conditioned in you since when? Think about it. Bring the glass up if you want to. Remember back, when did I first feel this way? Who taught me these things? Where did I learn this? What program of beliefs is telling me how to feel and what to do? <clears throat> When did I get this program? When did I get this conditioning feeling about spit? What's your earliest memory, emotional memory about spit? And what were you told to believe about it? How did you feel about it? What agreements did you make? It is what? Okay. A child spitting his bath. Kids spitting on each other, fighting, being told it was very wrong. And being wronged, you felt what emotion? You told you're wrong. Probably felt, I'm going to say probably guilt shame, unworthiness, you felt bad, bad emotions. I spit, I felt, got shamed, scolded, bad emotions, you see guilt, unworthiness, shame. Okay. Doesn't look nice when little girls spit. And what emotion did you feel? Ian, doesn't remember, yeah. Mom telling me not to spit, telling my brother not to drink from the milk bottle. Also, kids at school would steal each other's drinks and spit into them so that no one would could drink it. Yeah, it was a way to <clears throat> destroy it. And the feeling's wrong, defective, wrong equals defective. You're wrong for doing it, wrong for spitting equals defective. Okay, the feeling of defective. And that feeling is there in memory. I'm wrong, I'm defective. And all we have to do is bring that glass to our mouth or, or uh, spit in a glass. And our brain goes, oh, this is like that association that's programmed there. Here's the feeling again. And we feel that way now. Even though we're drawing from a memory to feel that way now. Just like my friend, he was 
second grade at the chalkboard. He felt that way now, even though he wasn't at the chalkboard anymore. We feel that way now, the same as we felt then, because we're still programmed with that emotional association and condition. And this is why, to go back to those core beliefs and remove the emotional element, the faith in that about ourselves and our identity, I'm wrong, I'm defective. If we want to change our identity and how we feel about ourselves. You guys are doing great. This is beautiful. It's going better than I mentioned it. You're digging in. Okay. Mom's saying not to spit out something I didn't like the taste of. My yucky uncle who spit on the sidewalk. Okay. This goes further. Arlen says, this goes further me like I won't do what someone wants me to do that doesn't feel okay to me. Like rebelling. Okay. It's funny, as I'm going back, I'm flashing on a memory of like, I grew up with three brothers. We would have spitting contests to see who could spit the farthest. You know, so that was a thing that was fun. That's what's flashing for me. So I have a different emotional association about that. I'm sure I got the other at times too, but I got some of both. So I can have, like, yeah, the first time I did this, I was asked to do this, like, what? Some resistance, but as I paid attention to it, realized I'm drinking saliva. This is this is this one's not it. Just so you know, this is the dirty glass. This is the clean one. This is okay. It's got the mug. It's right. for some of you still noticing your program response. Okay, now. Feeling anxious, trying to hunt a thought? Yeah, just, just relax. Take a breath. There's a lot going on here. Feeling anxious, thinking I'm not progressing enough through the exercise. Are you writing down what you're feeling? I'm feeling anxious, and the story is I'm not progressing enough through the exercise. We're not doing other thing, anything other than noticing program responses. And if you're noticing that you're anxious and the story is I'm not progressing, you're doing the exercise. That's what you're noticing. You're right on schedule. Okay, so we got, I suspect, three kinds of stories so far. One is, well, should be four. One is our reaction to spitting it out and drinking it. What are our belief system about saliva? Two is uh, ourselves. Okay, am I doing this right? Am I doing this wrong? Our conditioned response to, am I a success? Am I a failure at this? Is being activated? Okay. Comparing myself to others. Oh, they did it, not me, or I did it, not them. Okay, third story is, about other people, oh, they're gross for doing it, or, oh, they're doing better than me because they did it and I didn't do it. You know, we can put ourselves in the, I'm right for drinking the spit, I'm wrong for drinking the spit. We can place ourselves in either seat. We can place the other person, oh, they're wrong for drinking it, or they're right for drinking it. Our mind will structure the story automatically, and I want you to notice you're not choosing it. Those thoughts are coming, the judgments of others, judgments on yourself. This is all activation of an automatic program. In nowhere do you have a conscious like choice 
These thoughts are coming, these emotions and feelings are coming. This is what I'll call an activated belief system. And, and maybe it's all neutral. You're one of the people that's kind of neutral, didn't feel anything about it. That's fine too. You can kind of just use it as an example, see what other people are going through in their comments. Okay. Yeah, somebody's wondering, am I fitting in the tribe? Am I getting approved of because I'm doing what other people are doing? Who's the identity? And pick one of the scenarios that feels the strongest to you. Whether it's the, the 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 win at drinking it, or the disgust at drinking it, or the opinions of me for coming up with such a disgusting, stupid thing to do, and you know what your opinion is of me about it, or opinion of somebody else, or opinion of yourself. Any one of those scenarios you feel the strongest. What you notice the point of view identity you're in, and this is often the hardest to see. We've been looking at thoughts and stories, but who is the person with that strong opinion? Are you reverting back to your childhood self when your mom scolded and shamed you or kids you were told wrong? Like, do you feel like a little girl or, or boy that's been shamed or scolded? Like, I feel like I'm eight again. And I'm being told I'm wrong. Like, where does your identity go in any one of those strong emotional scenarios and narratives? You go to the emotion, and the emotion brings into about what age, what experience, what identity. 